Hey there, welcome back to the show. Congratulations for taking the time to really focus on yourself and your personal development. And you do that every week when you join me here on Monday Morning Mojo, which is such a joy for me because this podcast is really about you. And it's something that I spend time planning and thinking about because my intention is to support you and inspire you to create great opportunities for yourself, build careers and businesses worth having, but more importantly, to live well. And I, for a very long time, like most of you, have been using social media as a platform to really connect with people, to inspire people, encourage people. And for many years, I developed this habit, this routine of posting something inspiring, especially on a Monday morning and calling it your Monday morning mojo. And my intention was to create a post that would just get your mindset right. And because I do believe that whatever we focus on expands. And I think that if we can change the way we think it's something, then we have an opportunity to change the way we're looking at it. So that means the things that we're looking at actually change. And so with just some small shifts in your thinking, you can see some major improvements in your mood. You can see a shift in your perspective. And so I loved being able to share that. And then during spring of 2020, when many of us were feeling, you know, really anxious and feeling confused about what was happening around us, really having to pivot the way we did business, having to pivot the way that we interacted with people, I decided to get on every Monday morning and host a live Zoom call with different topics each week to help people set their mindset and to help them to reset it so that they could create more successful outcomes for themselves. And then, of course, that grew into this weekly podcast. That is why we call this Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. And I wanted to dedicate the conversation this week to Mojo and really unpack what Mojo is and how we can get it back if we think we've lost it. So I'm excited to jump into that. So the first thing, I guess, I want to make sure everyone is clear about is what exactly do I mean by mojo? And the definition of mojo, actually, when you define the word mojo, it means magic, power, and or life energy. When we talk about getting your mojo going, it's about creating that inner magic, right? Really connecting with your power and really using your energy to not just move through life, but to create life, to really use your power to attract more opportunities to you, to attract more life energy to you. So that is why I focus on that word. So what if you've been feeling lately like you've lost your mojo? Or maybe you're wondering perhaps if you could be suffering from a drop in mojo. So you might have lost your mojo if you're feeling a significant change in your energy, if you're feeling a drop in your enthusiasm, motivation, or confidence, and especially around the things that used to inspire you. If you're feeling like your energy is waning through the day on the things that you've normally spent time doing, then that can also be accompanied by a feeling of being uninspired or lacking direction, just feeling kind of meh. (laughs) And listen, I've been there too. And that is, I think, important for everyone to know is that we all can find ourselves in this space sometimes. And so if you think that you may be in this place in your life right now where you're lacking some mojo, Um, Again, look for those signs, right? Look for those signs that you're lacking excitement or feeling apathetic or uninterested in things that usually spark your passion. And if you're seeing that then affect your productivity, if you're seeing that you're struggling to finish or start something, if you're struggling to really get on track with your goals, 
you could be experiencing a lack of mojo because your energy, I'm sure, is very low. And when your energy is low, you can tend to feel really tired. You can tend to feel drained. You might even find yourself getting into some of that negative self-talk. You might find that you're increasing that self-doubt. You might even find that you're pulling away from some things or some people. And I, I think another sign that you might be lacking some mojo is just feeling overwhelmed, right? And overly uncreative. So listen, if that is, if you're sitting here listening to this and you're saying, oh yeah, check that box, check this box, that's me, oh my gosh, it's okay. First, I just want to tell you it is okay because we're human and these are things that can happen to us for many reasons. It doesn't mean that you're broken and it doesn't mean that you can't come back from it. And I think that as challenging as it might be, because I don't know if it's true for you, but it is true for me. When I have found myself feeling all of the above, when I find myself feeling overwhelmed or lacking enthusiasm or energy, especially for those things I used to really love to do, there's something that shifted in my world, right? There's something that changed either in my own thinking or in my environment that I fail to meet the challenge of, which is just part of being a human being. But the fact that we can be aware of this, the fact that we could feel it and then be aware of it means that we can fix it. So that's really what I want to talk about today is how to get your mojo back. Because if you're listening to this saying, oh my gosh, I can totally relate to everything Anna just said, and I've lost my mojo, it's okay, let's get it back. Let's figure out how to do that. Because that's really what you have in front of you is this opportunity to find it. So I want to share a couple of easy ways that you can find your mojo and you can get it back and really help yourself get back into feeling the passion and loving what you always have enjoyed doing. And here are some things that you can try to get your mojo back. Number one, focus on some small wins. I think that oftentimes, especially those of us who are, are living big lives, driving businesses, leading other people, uh, maybe we're working on more than one business. We are involved in a lot of things in our community, right? The list goes on and on. We're, we're raising kids and really doing the things that are meaningful to us. We can get a little overwhelmed and we can get lost in how much is happening. And if we're feeling like we're not making any progress, it might be because we're focusing too much on the big picture and not enough on chunking it down. Especially when your goals are big and your goals are annual and they're set to be accomplished over the course of 12 months, it can be an uphill battle for, for some of us to hit those goals for different reasons. So it's important that we focus on some small wins. We have to feel the victories along the way and recognize them and celebrate them. And so if you can create milestones along your path, if you can take that big goal and chunk it down into parts, but also just celebrate your progress because I think we can get wrapped up in feeling like it has to be perfect. If we can also recognize our progress and celebrate, that can do a lot to really, I think, bring back our motivation, bring back our inspiration, recharge our battery, and um, help us to, to really connect back with that magic or that mojo. The other thing that I can tell you has helped me a lot because I recently found that um, I was struggling a little bit with my mojo too, is I had to get back to being consciously aware and connected to my own mission, my own vision for my life, personally and professionally, and my values. And when we're clear about what our mission is, that creates this GPS, right? That gives us the vision and the clarity and our values are the rules we live by. I'm going to give you a little gift today. When you um, take a look at the show notes, you'll see a link for a download. It's a worksheet that I have that will help you identify your values. And it's so important for us to get clear about what our core values are. And I just want to say, too, that your values can change. The values that you held 
really close to your heart and the things that were uh, near and dear to you when you were in your 20s are going to change when you're in your 50s. So it might be a good exercise for you to do every few years and just check back in to see if your values have shifted a little bit. But I will say that your values become the rules that you live by. And if you find that you're ever working or living outside of your values, or if a relationship that you're in, professional or personal, doesn't really understand the value system that you have, that can create a lot of um, friction. It can create a lot of stress. And so it's important for you to really get clear about that and focus back on your mission and your values and bring whatever you're doing back into an alignment. And it could be bringing a relationship in alignment. It could be bringing in your activities back in alignment, your mindset back in alignment, so that the way that you think is in alignment with the way that you feel and with the way that you believe and the way that you act. And so that is something that can really do wonders to bring your mojo back. Another thing is to look at how you're spending your time. Now, throughout the day, there are many things that we can all agree we just have to do. And many of those things should be in your top 20%, your priority. And we know that by putting the time on that and making that a priority, it is going to move us closer to our goals. Let's also make that conscious connection so that we can feel like we are linking our tasks to what is driving us. And I think it's important that we also look at how we spend our time outside of that. And are we putting enough things on our calendar that bring us fulfillment, that bring us joy, that balance out some of the intensity we might be experiencing in our career and our business as we're driving towards our goals? You've got to do some things for self-care as well when you're building a big business. And so if it's one-sided, then you're going to lose your mojo and feel like you're burning out. So I think it's important that you link your tasks with what drives you both professionally and personally. All right, number four, we're talking about some things that you can do to get your mojo back. Now, I know someone's going to hear this and probably roll their eyes, and that's completely fine, but I'm going to tell you again that positivity brings more positivity. And here's the thing, guys. You can't think positively and have negative thoughts at the same time. You can't live a positive life and have limiting beliefs. So if you're surrounding yourself internally with your thoughts or externally with people and your environment with a lot of negativity, then that's not going to help you move forward. And you're going to feel like you're never going to find your mojo again. So surround yourself with positivity and surround yourself with support. Who can you talk to when you're feeling off? Who can you talk to about feeling like you might be a little burnt out or that you've lost some inspiration and motivation? Who can help you get back on track? There might be a different person in each area of your life, right? As we know with our Wheel of Life exercise, there are different parts of our whole being. And how can we find someone in our career, let's say, that's going to help coach or mentor us? Who can help us with our spirituality? Who can help us with our health and wellness goals? Who can help us with our financial goals? Who can help us with our relationship? And the person who can help you move you forward can also be the person who can talk to you when you're feeling stuck. And so I think it's important that you identify a coach, a mentor, an accountability partner, a trusted advisor who can really help you and give you the support that you need. All right. As we move through my list today, the next one I have for you when it comes to getting your mojo back is take a really hard look at your calendar. Take a really hard look at how much time you're spending on those 20% activities, okay? What I'm referring to is the Pareto Principle, which is basically it's this predictable imbalance to the way life works. But it's referred to as the Pareto Principle because it was discovered by an Italian economist. His name was Pareto. And what he really found to be true, again, it's this imbalance, this perfect imbalance to life that when you think about creating big results, it's really about narrowing your focus. So we refer to it as this 80-20 rule, essentially because about 20% of the activities that you could focus on will bring you 80% of the results that you seek. 
And the opposite can also be true. By putting a lot of your time and energy into the 80% stuff, it's going to minimize the results you're seeking. It's only going to probably bring you about 20% closer to your success goals. It's about understanding when we're talking about getting your mojo back and taking a hard look at how we spend our time, are we putting enough time and energy in the 20% activities or are we allowing ourselves to get distracted? Because the distraction could be a form of avoidance and it could be taking us off track and it sometimes feels like a little bit of a relief or fun at first, but I feel like what it does is it helps us spiral out. It helps us burn out and it helps us to get a little bit lost on the path back to our goals. If you take a hard look at how you're spending your time, can you be honest about where you need to schedule the tasks, improve the habits that will actually have you seeing results, which when you see results, that's motivating. When you see results, you feel like you're making progress. And that's going to create some magic again. That's going to raise your energy. That's going to increase your motivation, aka your mojo. So the way you spend your time is a big indicator to how much of your mojo you are experiencing. So I think that also is important. And the last one is to also be honest with yourself about the pace in which you're working. For some of us, if we're working at such a fast pace and it becomes imbalanced with a lot of work and not a lot of, let's say, play, then that's going to take us to burnout. If we don't take regular breaks, if we don't sometimes clear our head a little bit, and I'm not just talking about a vacation, although that is important too, I'm saying even during the day, do you get up from your desk and walk around? Do you go outside and get some fresh air? Do you do anything to hit the pause button so that you can have this pattern interrupt in your thinking and what you're doing? Just recharging the battery. That can do a lot to help you get your mojo back too. So all of this is an opportunity to self-assess. This whole conversation is about really, I think, raising the question about where am I? How am I feeling? It's the fourth quarter. Am I on track? Do I feel like I'm getting really great results right now? Do I feel like I need some help in some areas? If you're feeling blah and you might be suffering from a little lack of interest or excitement, if you might be feeling like things are just monotonous, if you're feeling a loss of passion on some of your goals and you're unable to find that motivation because of what you're spending your time on, if all this describes your experience, you might have lost your mojo. And so the checklist I just shared with you is an opportunity for you to get it back. And it's an opportunity for you to really take control back because that's really what this is about is taking back some control so that you can feel more positive, so that you can feel like you're flourishing again, so that you can feel like you're creating a path towards the things that you want. And the good news is that all of this is fixable. It's all doable. And it's all within our power to connect with what's going on in, in our, our life currently, right? We have to connect with the situation. Because remember, nothing changes if nothing changes. And any kind of healing, any kind of positive change will always start with recognition or awareness. So you're in a safe space here. It's okay to acknowledge that maybe you've lost a little of your mojo. I think if you could replay this and look at the checklist that I shared with you, figure out what's one thing you could do in each of those areas that might move the needle forward so that you can start to feel a little differently. And I think that this is your time to be present in whatever you're doing. It's your time to to really get clear about what it is that you want and realize that you have the power to make any change that you need to in your life. It's just about making a decision to start living your own life on your terms. You don't have to accept the status quo. You don't have to accept the way you're feeling. You can decide at any moment that you can make a change. So get your mojo back. Make sure that this podcast is part of your plan too. Every Monday, I'm going to share something that will help you reset your mindset, 
something that will help you to think differently, something that will help you to feel differently, feel inspired, feel motivated. I'll do that by sharing my experiences. I'll do that by sharing my knowledge with you. I'll do that by bringing guests on that will help you. And it's really a joy to spread some mojo every week. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see you next week.